Coastal Funeral Home 3995, which includes all services, a steel casket. Police found 28 human-sized dolls which he had prepared himself. They say those aren't dolls strewn about the apartment. Their hands and faces wrapped in what appears to be cloth. Russia, the largest country in the world, it occupies one-tenth of all the land on Earth. Well known for its vodka, the word vodka stems from the Russian word voda, or water. So with that, you can infer that Russians are one of, if not the highest consumers of this alcoholic beverage. You may recognize Red Square or be familiar with the advancements of the Soviet space program. But one particular section of well-known Russian culture has always intrigued me. Ever seen dolls like this? They are called Matroyashka dolls, otherwise known as Russian nesting dolls. These dolls are one of Russia's most iconic toys and vintage symbols. These stackable and nestable dolls resemble a vibrant babushka or traditional Russian grandmother. This award-winning doll created by Sergei Malyutin has been featured in countless media. A nesting doll features several dolls within the original encasing, each one smaller than the last. To me, the outer encasing resembles that of a mummy coffin of ancient Egypt. For some, dolls are nightmare fuel. Others, it brings them a strange form of warmth, like having others around to watch over them. Take a look at this photograph that has circulated the web for over a decade. If this photo doesn't make you feel uneasy, you just might be a psychopath. This is no ordinary doll. In fact, this isn't really a doll at all. Beneath the dead painted eyes and crudely molded face is the decaying exhumed corpse of a young Russian girl. Identity unknown. The man behind this abomination is Anatoly Moskvin, a grave robber who was arrested for one of the strangest crimes ever committed. Anatoly Moskvin was born on September 1st, 1966 in Gorky, Russia. Early on, Anatoly found solace in roaming cemeteries near his home. When he was just a young schoolboy, he witnessed a funeral procession for an 11-year-old girl. The participants forced him to kiss the dead girl's face. An adult pushed my face down to the waxy forehead of the girl in an embroidered cap, and there was nothing I could do but kiss her as ordered. At Moscow State University, Moskvin was a well-known academic, described as a genius and a very eccentric person. He had an interest in Celtic history and folklore, as well as languages and linguistics. This guy speaks 13 languages. He's always had a deep and obsessive intrigue with the occult, death, and burial rituals. He kept a personal library of over 60,000 books and documents, along with a very large doll collection. Though when he became an adult, he led a very secluded life. He never married, never dated, and he lived with his parents didn't drink, nor did he smoke, and he was a self-proclaimed virgin. He was living the incel premium package. If you could summarize your opinion towards women. Like what I think of them? Yes. <laughs> I do think they are very important, but... He often wrote books and newspaper articles calling himself the necropolist, an all-knowing journalist surrounding the world of death and cemeteries in his local city. So what? He's intrigued by death. Many people are. If you're anything like me, you grew up on horror movies, serial killer documentaries, and crime dramas. But here's where things get a little quirky. In 2005, Oleg Ryabov, a fellow academic, commissioned Moskvin to list the dead in more than 700 cemeteries surrounding his hometown. Between 2005 and 2007, he traveled 
on foot to 752 cemeteries, sometimes walking up to 18 miles a day. On his way, he didn't stop in town or find friends to stay with. He drank from puddles, spent the night in haystacks in abandoned farms, or slept in the cemeteries themselves, even going as far as spending an entire night in a coffin being prepared for a funeral. Moskvin did have a few run-ins with the law prior. He was accused of vandalism and theft on a few occasions, but was never detained as he would display his credentials to the officials. Little did police know that Moskvin had been very careful and meticulous about his crimes. In fact, there was a history dating back 20 years from his arrest in 2011. He felt great sympathy for the dead. He wanted to use science and black magic to resurrect the corpses. An expert in Celtic culture, he learned that ancient druids would sleep on the graves of the dead in order to communicate with them. Druids were the teachers, the judges, and the philosophers of Celtic society. This led Moskvin to search for obituaries of recently deceased children. Finding an obituary that spoke to him, he would sleep on the child's grave, and through dreams and talking to the grave, he would determine whether the child could be saved. Imagine the parents visiting the grave, and they just see an old, dirty man sleeping on the dirt above their daughter's casket. Or imagine if he ran into someone else sleeping on another grave next to him. I mean, what a good bonding moment, especially under the stars. Moskvin claims he never dug up a body that didn't want to be dug up. Eventually, it became tough to continue sleeping on the graves. He's getting older and more frail, so he began digging up the bodies and taking them to his home so they'd have a nice, comfy, warm environment in order to communicate with him. Moskvin does deep diver research on mummification theories and techniques. His attempts to conserve the bodies involved drying the corpses in salt and baking soda, and he would hide the bodies in various spots in the cemetery. Once they were fully dried, he would just carry them home. Within his home, a crude workshop where he would attempt to make dolls using strange botched methods. He believed these dolls were suitable bodies for the young girls until he could figure out a way to bring them back from the dead. He thought that their decaying body was far too ugly and dysfunctional for them to return to this world and be happy. He'd wrap the limbs in strips of cloth and stuff the body cavity with rags to fill out the doll. Anatoly Moskvin was fully aware he was committing a crime. He felt that saving the dead children was far more important. What really motivated him to do this? Moskvin always wanted to have his own daughter. He actually attempted to adopt a young girl, but was denied for income reasons. He did not have sexual attraction to the dolls. He thought of them as his very own children. He would clothe them, sing songs to them, watch cartoons with them, and hold birthday parties. For the dolls. In 2011, police are investigating a string of grave desecration and after all this time finally pinpoint the culprit. Investigators raid the flattened garage of Moskvin. They discover something straight out of a horror movie. Stepping foot into this house was nearly impossible. The floors were covered in documents and stacks of books along with general clutter. But on shelves, sofas, and tucked in the corners all over the house were these mummified dolls. Faces were clay with nail polish painted on them. Russian police have released this video they shot in what can be described as a house of horrors. They say those aren't dolls strewn about the apartment, but actual remains of people a historian had dug up and dressed in women's clothing and then put on display. Police say they found 29 mummified remains, most of which were in the apartment the suspect shares with his parents. They were dressed in bright dresses and headscarves, their hands and faces wrapped in what appears to be cloth. Some of the remains are thought to have been stolen from this cemetery. Police released these booking photos of the suspect, who has been identified as a top local expert on cemeteries. Authorities are now working to identify all of the remains they've found. It's not clear yet what specific charges the suspect may face. Ed Donahue, the Associated Press. His parents, whom rarely came around the house, never suspected what he was doing. Moskvin was charged under Article 244 of the Criminal Code for the desecration of graves and dead bodies, which can carry up to five years in prison 
Under further examination, he was determined to be a paranoid schizophrenic, found unfit to stand trial, and since 2012, Anatoly Moskvin has been in and out of psychiatric care, being determined for outpatient care, and then often brought back due to them releasing him too early.